beer was actually at Varsity, uh, third year biochemistry. We brewed kit beers. Uh, the beer was called Witch's Brew. It was an app name. <laughs> that was my first real homebrew. Um, actually, came, uh, only seven years ago. We had a um, we were a group of friends hosting supper clubs, and me, being the hooligan I am, decided to do everything from scratch. Uh, that forest cake, pretzels, um, pork belly, and all grain, biosphere. And my brewing kit from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty much the first day. Um, I, I, I woke up that morning when I my kit was still not completely built. Finally mashed in around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock that afternoon. Uh, thought it was the way to go, the two decoctions. Um, I think around midnight uh, I woke up and I said, okay, it's time. I can't carry 20 litres of boiling water on my own. Uh, you need to help me carry this to the bath so we can cool it. So yeah, that was my very, very first beer. Um, three weeks later, popped it open at the supper club and it was a perfect pass. That's the way I remember it, okay? That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, everyone had one or two bottles, so it could have, couldn't have been that bad. But I mean, we all know you, you, you grow, your palate develops, so I don't know if it was the best beer ever, but it was really, really good. Okay, so in starting a craft brand, as a homebrewer, or as a homebrewer, I actually don't mind sharing my recipes. Because I know we all have egos, <laughs> and you will change it. <laughs> so that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to share my recipe, but I mean, go further. Um, that, that, I think that's my big takeaway from this. Uh, next one. Oh. oh, yeah, so you saw the, the, the book. That was my first recipe, actually. Okay, next one. Um, so this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, I actually heard it the first time watching the Poet Society. I grew up watching it quite, quite a few times. But that last line, I sound my barbaric yelp over the rooftops of the world. I brew a lot. Um, and the, way, the reason I can do it is actually because I'm part of a homebrew club, the East Rand. Um, they would, uh, there's at least a quarterly event where you can showcase your beer and share your beer. So for about three years, I managed to brew between 35 and 40 batches a year. So that, that's a lot. Um, when I brew, it's normally a double brew day. I'll slow it down. <laughs> um, but it's... it's it's mostly I've slowed down because uh, I'm doing so much other things, like storing a brain. Um, but in brewing this much, I could actually explore ingredients. I did, my, 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 my favorite style actually has developed into a parallel. The balance between the hop, the malt base, the level of hopping, and the um, the malt not being too expressive, the hops not being too expressive, gives you the base for to compare yeast. Again, with malt, the yeast and the malt not being too expressive, you can compare hops. And with the others not being too exp uh, expressive, you can compare malt. So with that, I've actually brewed to until I found my voice, my yop, and it's German, <laughs> <laughs> and not. I love Pilsner malt, or I think European is better. So yeah, I love Pilsner malt. I really adore the New World um, German hops. Hello to Blanc, Hello to Mandarina Bavaria, uh, Whole Melon, lovely hops. And then um, I just brew through all the yeast. So the yeast strain I ended up using is White Labs, 51, it's California 4. Yeah, I picked a prima donna of the yeast. <laughs> but it, what, what I like about that yeast is it, it remains out quite dry, which um, I believe is, is something you absolutely need for our local climate, not today, but in general. We need something dry, drinkable, profitable. But it also leaves a bit of mouthfeel. 
and then that's, that's actually why I picked that yeast, and it makes the malt and the horse pop. So you want all of that. Okay, next one. Keep seeking the light. <laughs> okay, I'll stop right there reading out the three words that's written on each line. Um, <laughs> the ten words that's written on each line. Okay. Um, for me, this is actually do not ruin isolation. Go out, join clubs, join events, get feedback. Uh, next one, Jules. So for me, that's the word Um I've been part of them, I think, for about six years now. Uh, yeah, as Julian indicated, I was voted to for the East Rand chapter this year. Um, that's, that's quite a learning curve. But yeah, with, with that, you um, there's two great reasons to join a club. Firstly, you get genuine feedback. And you also get to taste fantastic beers and horrible beers. And both of those skills are really necessary to develop your own palate and your gut feel and experience. Um, so with tasting enough homebrew, I've actually started studying for BJCP, and that's the next, second step I would re uh, recommend. You don't necessarily have to go and sit for the exams and be recognized and qualified and, 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 and. But being part of that training program, you've got structured tastings with people. And in that structured tasting, you you actually then learn to identify flavors. And people are always worried about, like, oh, if I've got all the skills, I'll never enjoy beer again. I actually found it's, it's easier. I can spend two seconds, okay? And then I can profit. Or I can profit, I'm like, damn, it's cool. I need, just need to slow down for a second. Okay, cool, we can continue. So it's, it's and, and the thing is, it's not that you're learning to taste more. You, you, everything is in your body. Everything is in your mind. It's, it's birth, building those verbal connections. And that's the nice thing about a structured tasting. Okay, next one. Yeah. Building a brand is building a brand. So it's, it's about picking a name, picking a story. Um, so you can see Jordan Brewery was my first one. You've seen the pub around here. <laughs> um, it's a German, uh, it's a white head pointer. Um, I, I thought it was pretty apt. It's a lively, energetic dog with curly hair. I thought that sounds about right. And um, then I learned something that they call the bar top shot test. So I have trouble spelling this most days. So now I want my customers to spell this. I want my customers to pronounce it over a loud bar. Um, so I, I quickly realized it's very cool. Um, but it's not going to work. And actually last night as I was building the slides, I looked at it and I looked at it next to the McDonald's logo that I'm showing you and I'm like, damn it looks sketchy. It actually looks perfect for homebrew but not, not going pro. So I'm very glad that I canned it. It wasn't immediately but I, I, I did can it eventually. What name you pick doesn't make sense or doesn't matter. If you think about McDonald's, you don't think about burgers and Ronald and all of the other things around it. It should be an Irish pub. Okay, that, um, that's not my insight, so that's, that's a side note. I've been reading technical books about beer. And when I'm not reading about beer, I'm reading about business and branding and and and, and, and. So that's a nice thing. It's, it's, it's a learning experience the whole way. The big thing is pick a name that you can build a story around. Okay, next one. So I had to go and find a new story. And I found the best way to do that was to actually pick a target market. I live in Gauteng, I love Gauteng, I love the weather, the people, being there, the energy, everything about it. So I, I knew this, is, this has to be my target market. I can identify with the people, I'm in that same race, <laughs> I need the same escapism, 
And part of that escapism for me was beer, slowing down, enjoying it with friends, interacting with people. So, so I absolutely had to focus on cutting. And I realized what beer bought me was the ability to slow down. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, not yet. <laughs> Next one. So in, in a search of, I mean, it, it, it's almost like a life quest, learning to slow down. Um, so I read a lot around it. And the one article I found was that this, uh, was this whole story about a Spanish bullfight. And um, the bull retreats to this one place in the arena. And when the matador realizes it keeps returning to that one spot, it actually realizes this, this is the place where the bull almost sees us itself. It slows down, it becomes a whole bull again. And then it actually becomes dangerous. And I realized in that pause, that moment, we can become a whole again and we can become fantastic, dangerous ourselves again. So, <laughs> that's why we can keep it in. So, Carencia is was the, the word I fell in love with, and that's the word that the term they use in in the bullfighting arena. <clears throat> but uh, by now I've learned that there's the part of shot test. And again, it's not on native language. So uh, me and my thesaurus have become big buddies. <laughs> um, but that's how I came about pause. And the moment the words clicked, everything fell in place. Um, it's got a big iconic history. We all, we, our, my generation grew up with a VHS, you know, with the streets around the place. We all know that. But we all know that pause is also temporary. And I think that's the thing is, in cutting, run, work hard, be your best, take that moment, and just go at it again, balls to the wall. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I came to, to pause. And the nice thing about it is uh, I uh, searched for, for a, a creative agency to help me execute on this idea. And uh, it took about two months before the, the head hunter said, you know what, in the beginning I didn't get it, but the more I worked with this, I'm like, actually, this is a pretty cool logo. This is a pretty cool concept. So that's why I'm also bombarding you with the logo the whole time. And it's like, that's it. I said, sure. You see, it's here the whole time. It's in your faces. <laughs> okay, so, so that's, that's all the excitement in, in getting to that place where, okay, I'm going to do this. This is how it's going to look. But contract brewing is actually all about the partnerships. So um, you have to firstly know yourself, the route you want to travel, and then you can pick the right partner. Um, I needed a place where I could be intimately involved with the process. I had to know if a beer went down the drain, it's me. And I don't want to point the fingers at anyone else. When it goes wrong, I want to know what I did so I can don't have to do it again. So for me that was <laughs> so for me that partnership is half cent and Julian and Wendy. Um, they've got a be beautiful kit and Jules is always there in the background. <laughs> if I mess up and I say, like, okay, how do I do this again? Um, so so the technical support is there. And not just the technical support, the moral support as well. And they, Mr. Christopher here, also helped <laughs> when I panic and I freak out over yeast. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know what? Moral support is having a soundboard. And to just voice your fears and hear from the other side, slow down. Or like Jules say, slow down to a mild panic. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's, that's the biggest thing I've learned is what did they say? Um, a doctor take your own medicine or something like that? I don't know the full, full thing. Phys yeah, physician heal myself. There you go. Um, so that's the one thing I've, I've realized. I'm, I'm, I'm like going at the moment and I'm missing that pause. 
not gonna hold that now. What's going on there? This is on wheels running. Yes, on this, this, this. Oh, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, um, so my partnerships are liquid culture. Um, and that's the nice thing is, um, they said, um, I went through all this development work and I could actually source locally. Um, with Julian and them, uh, we've built a relationship uh, uh, of trust over the years and, and it's paying off, whether it's in technical support or moral support. Okay, next. Okay, packaging. This is the fun part. Um, I, I've learned, I'm just putting the words together, doing a little word document of one year to my whole weekend. Um, some quick takeaways that I've learned. Um, work with standard die sizes. That's a standard sticker size. It makes it a lot cheaper. And uh, technical insight. That beer label you see, there's a half a percent swing on that ABV either side. So you don't have to panic yourself to death when you're working out a recipe. It, it, it's quite easy to hit, hit that half a percent band. Okay, so that, that was some of the fun takeaways on that. Uh, next one. Okay, so, oh, sorry, so this is now all in the execution side of, of building a brand. Um, yeah, brewing, um, I'm not going to get into that. When you find your right partner, you, you develop that with them. Um, a PW does a turnkey service where you let's say, I want the ale, I want the lager, and, and you can just put your label on it. So yeah, there's, there's various ways to get there. This, this was my way. Um, distribution. So I decided to go direct to market. So that's what was why I uh, decided to partner with Hops End. Uh, they've got a canning facility. So again, that made it easier for me to execute my vision. Um, everything went into, I built my own website. Well, that's a relative term. Um, there's so many options out there. Um, I decided to go with Shopify and my big lever for that was um, that got good, very good background security integration. And I think that's the big thing you need to realize when you're going into a commercial environment. It's all about the customer. Okay, so I'm pretty happy. You can't really see it, but... <laughs> My, my website speeds above average. So again, make it easier for the customers to interact with your system. Okay. Uh, next one, please. Uh, yeah. Admin. <laughs> it doesn't stop. <laughs> So that was also some of the fun bits. It took me quite a few days to figure out how to incorporate the legalese into the website. And um, it's one of those nice things about um, technology. Um, there's always many ways to do it. It's actually very easy if you start from the right direction. That's what I can say. But yeah, um, in terms of usability, um, the Shopify platform I use is very good. Uh, good speeds, good pay gate in integration, so that's, that was a lot of fun. Um, the next uh, step that I've started with is distribution now, and that, that was all a new learning curve. Box sizes make a big difference, and um, uh, getting extra packaging in there. So, I shipped a few boxes to friends and family, and the thing, first thing is, as the delivery notification comes through, how does the package look? <laughs> <laughs> Screw <beer. laughs> So yeah, it, it's a continuous learning curve, and, and as you pass one gate, you find yourself at the next gate. And I think that's a big takeaway as well. Um, everything takes long uh, because you're continuously learning. So uh, as as you get better, the process and you, you sort your systems out, um, it'll flow better. But yeah. It, it, it takes a while to, to get to this point. 